Hey everyone, in this video I want to share with you one of the uh, worst mistakes that we made in my previous careers and that was not investing enough time to design Mongo document structure. So what that means, uh, I will go from the personal experience that I have, I will not like uh, speak in general. So we used to have a service to manage these logs for entities uh, such as for products or categories for e-commerce uh, e commerce business. Uh, and the slug, I mean the part of URL. So in, so there was multiple countries, and each country had like has different slug, and we need to store it in the in the Mongo database uh, or Mongo collection. And we thought if, uh, if for example for a specific country a slug does not exist, or let's at all let's say if there is a product created but there is no slug yet for that. Um, or it's not something I don't know confirmed or not approved. We do not include it in our uh, in our document structure. So there are kind of like few metadata in the document structures, just, such as I don't know, uh, created that, updated that, um, is active, and yeah, some few more fields. And the main one that the core core service is using was slug field. And because of bad document structure we thought that okay we don't if slug is not exist we, we were receiving messages from queues and processing it and while processing we said that okay if this field does not exist just save it without assigning default value so we will save a space in the mongo database this is like that was a very bad decision because we didn't think what will happen if there's if this service will scale, if we will receive hundred millions of messages through queues, like how queries will perform if there are no slugs? Like it's it's straightforward. Like it's going to be by existent checking, the queries or the filters will go through the documents and will check if that filters exist, then uh, apply the query and so whatever. Uh, basically, at the top level is existent checking of the field. Instead of uh, instead of like just assigning a default value to the field and use the power of index to make these queries lightning speed fast, so it that was a main bottleneck for us. It created a lot of issues, and there was no any logical way to count the documents that has no slug field. You just need to go through all the documents and check one by one in separate Python script. And then say, okay, we have I don't know one million documents with our slug. Even that takes I don't know four hours, and this is also not guaranteed. Mongo database can drop the connection, and you need to start from the scratch. You see where it goes, like basically uh, to the rabbit hole. So in this video, I want to share with you a. So I prepared a script, two scripts that some somehow reflecting to the real world experience that I had, or. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's not that much. I have a, I have source collection with 1.8 million of documents, and I have two scripts here, which is one of them uh, DB bad document structure and good document structure. So um, what these what those scripts are doing basically reading from the let me share with you the. Mongo database. So this is products. I, I name it GMC products collection name. I have 1. million documents. Um, this is just a how to say source collection, and we are reading it, and then writing, migrating all this data to target collection, or let's say to different collection. Uh, for this script, the target collection is I named it bad collection because. This is going to be illustrate like this is going to uh, show you what will happen if we completely remove the field and then query with existent checking how much time it will take. And for every third script, um, oh, sorry, not every third item, we are deleting slug for U.S. country <clears throat> and simply like additional field we are changing the currency. Um, this is how it looks like. So the price, currency, USD, and slug. There are US and SA, so values are same, but the main goal is just to delete one of them and query based on that. I try to make the document uh, a bit complicated, but definitely this is this is kind of 
middle complexity level document structure in Mongo database. Uh, because all of them, you know, for example, this is string, all of, most of them are string, there is no any, uh, only two of them is object. So yeah, kind of reflects to real world uh, solutions. Uh, but I will at the end the results will definitely reflect so let's let's go let's continue through the script <clears throat> so it's deleting and assigning a new value and that's basically all let's run this script and at the end we have measure filter execution time which will perform a query by existing checking so we need we need query the collection where um, slug us not exist and the price currency is going to be euro, uh, euro. I'll just comment this line <clears throat> so this part is going to create index migrate the collection from the source to the target by deleting uh, the fields uh, the given fields and then at the end measure filter execution time this function is going to perform a query and uh, print the benchmarks. Let's save and run this query. So it will take for a while I think because it's 1.8 uh, millions of data. And meanwhile it's going I just want to show you one thing that today has happened. Um, I will go to <coughs> sorry I will go to my um, my product that I made for cross-publishing cross-publishing blog posts to the uh, to the dev medium hashnode and ghost directly from notion and this pro I just launched it today and it somehow featured on product hunt that was like surprising to me oh it's already 50 so that's good uh, so if you want to check you can definitely go and uh, not give up um, upwards because probably when I share this video it's going to be finished but you can go and check uh, the product itself so how it's going? It's still it's still pushing. Okay, maybe I will cut cut this part, and when it's finished, I will come back again. All right, everyone. Um, so the migration finished, and now we have. Uh, I will just close this. Let's refresh the view, reload data, and bad collection. We have 1.8 million documents. We have index here uh, based on the query that we perform. Time to execute filter query is 1.8 seconds. So let's keep this in mind and let's go to to the collection and we'll, we will see that in some places it's present the US and in some places it's not for example at that point and this is where it just goes like that. So the first one 1.8 seconds Let's go to the next one and then we will compare it. So the, the second script is basically uh, what it's doing. It's all same, just a few changes, and that is get yeah, this one. Every third item, instead of deleting field completely, we're assigning a default value, and that's going to be none. Let's check with uh, with assigning a default value. So the query is based on now uh, by checking the exact value instead of existence and I will just run the script. Also when it's finishing <laughs> when it will finish I will uh, continue with the uh, with the video. Cool everyone it's finished and the difference is like insane. Uh, let's go back to collection, we'll reload data and good collection. We have one again 1.8 million documents, the index are same and execution time is 0 0.15 seconds. So that is like huge uh, significant difference and I just want to mention or highlight uh, in this video this is only for 1.8 million documents. In real-world apps, in scalable apps, this is probably too much. For uh, for my case, that was five million documents, and only one one point eight is taking 
like one second and what was it uh, 1.20 or something imagine how 50 um 500 million is going to be and um the document complexity also matters in these queries and for my case i just use a fake library to generate dummy data and i just try to make it a bit complicated but still not uh, how to say reflects to real world app the document structure specifically uh, in real world apps this is probably more complicated than this and and uh, taking to equation that this is also going to impact the uh, the speed then that basically blows the mind so what i'm suggesting is uh, at the end if um so I'm not saying always remove, um, always like uh, assign a default value to the field, but it depends on your needs or application needs. If you are going to like, if it's a single field or two field, then I would suggest, and of course the application if it's scalable, then I would suggest to assign a default value instead of deleting it. But if um, the load is not going to be that much and the field is not using that much for frequent in different places of the service then you can delete it but uh, but personally uh, it doesn't matter for me uh, if my app is going to be even not that much scalable I would still use uh, the, in the, um, the default values for um, high performance and yeah that's basically all for this video um, I post so I pushed this code to GitHub repository, and inside README I'm uh, instructing all the steps that I take to uh, calculate the benchmarks. First, you need to uh, run the Docker Compose. It's Mongo database running uh, in Docker container. You will install the requirements, and there's a one Python script populate.py using fake library and just pushing uh, 1.8 million products. To, uh, to that Mongo database container and finally if you want to um, benchmark the uh, write operations you can use the, those scripts I have dedicated video for that I think m my previous video is about it and if you want to test like read operations uh, with existing checking and without existing checking or, or versus assigning default value then you can use those scripts so yeah, thank you for watching and see you see you in the next one. Cheers.